What's up guys, TechLab here, and in today's video we're going to be doing a bit of a check-in on this. This is the AMD Radeon RX 6500XT. It is a graphics card that was released by AMD as part of the 6000 series. It was supposed to be their answer to the budget gamers, but it didn't really pan out that well. Now in the last generation there were actually a few weird cards that were delivered by different manufacturers, and we thought we'd do a bit of a series on it, and this is the one that we're going to be looking at first. So this is the AMD Radeon RX 6500 XT. This is a Sapphire Pulse model that we managed to pick up about two months after its launch, and we actually paid £90 for it. Now that was actually on a bit of a crazy eBay bid that we managed to get this card for because they were actually selling for around £200. The cards were actually supposed to be released for around £180, but during the GPU crisis, nothing was actually at retail price. And even though a lot of people thought that these would survive due to the uh, issues that AMD had with them, they didn't actually survive that price hike either. At the prices they were going for, they didn't actually make sense, and that's because of the kneecapping that AMD did to them. The first issue they had was that they made them only PCI Gen 4. Now that wouldn't have been so bad if they hadn't have also cut down the PCI lanes to a times 4 it actually meant the card was quite throttled, and then to top it all off, they only gave it 4GB of RAM, which was really strange from AMD because they were the company that were out there saying that 8GB should be the minimum. Just to add a little salt to the wound, they also removed some of the encoders from it, which also meant it actually wasn't that good for streaming either. Now before release, we knew that these cards were not going to be that good, and the reason for that is because AMD actually compared them to their older models, the RX 570, and not actually the 5000 series. This should have brought red flags to all of those watching those launch videos, but I think at the time, a lot of people were so desperate for these cards, they did actually sell pretty well. Now when it came to pricing at launch, they were supposed to be around £180, but you could get them all the way up to around 300 which totally doesn't make sense for the performance you're getting because it is just like one of the RX 500 series. We have done a video on this in the past, and what we'll do is we'll link it at the end if you want to go watch it, but our original video was when it was sitting in a PCI Gen 3 system. Now the reason that we did that in that video was, one, we didn't actually have a PCI Gen 4 system, and two, when these were actually released, they were marketed towards the budget gamers, and most people that are sitting on a budget were actually sitting on a PCI Gen 3 system. But things have now changed. We've actually got a newer system in here for our test bench, and it is a PCI Gen 4 system. And things have changed for a lot of the budget gamers out there. AMD have now released a lot more of the 5000 series chips, and they've sold a lot more 500 series boards. The same can be said of Intel, because they've sold a lot of 12th gens now, and even the 13th gen is out, which also supports PCI Gen 4. Now, because things have moved on, we thought it was time to actually retest it and see if it actually starts to make sense now. As usual, we've done some benchmarking with this, and we actually had to redo all of our previous benchmarking as well, because obviously it's a new CPU that we've got on a new motherboard. So let's take a look at those benchmarks, and then we'll discuss the results.
with the rebenching and the new system, we also tested a bunch of new games. These are more demanding games, but realistically, any card at this price range should be able to play anything at 1080p high and at least get 60 frames per second. In Back to Blood, the RX 6500 XT in PCI Gen 4 managed to maintain a pretty decent average FPS of 122. The 1% lows were about half of this and you could tell as the game did suffer from random stutters, particularly when there were a lot of enemies on the screen. Death Stranding was a pretty smooth gameplay experience, which was quite shocking knowing how demanding the game could be, but the RX 6500 XT still managed to get an average of 86 frames per second with pretty decent 1% lows. Now Doom Eternal is actually an extremely well optimised game and we expected the RX 6500 XT to do much better than it did, getting an average FPS of just 90, which is more than playable but not great when you include those 1% lows. The 0.1% lows dropped as low as 39 in places, which like Back for Blood caused some in-game stutter. It didn't really take away from the game, all the gameplay, but you could tell it was there. God of War gave us one of the worst experiences from the games that we tested, only getting an average of 47 frames per second, with quite terrible 1% lows. The 0.1% lows dropped to around 12 FPS, which caused a lot of stuttering, particularly when turning the view very quickly. This game demonstrates quite well the kneecapping that the RX 6500 XT was given, even when running in PCI Gen 4. To play this game with a decent experience, you would have to tune your settings down quite a bit. Shadow of the Tomb Raider performed as expected. The game, like Doom Eternal, is quite optimised and so the RX 6500 XT managed to maintain an average of 82 FPS. 1% lows were pretty decent, although, like all the other games tested, it did see its fair share of dips. Nothing that actually took away from the experience, and without the FPS counter, you probably wouldn't have even been able to tell. So that is the performance of the RX 6500 XT a couple of years after its release when running in PCI Gen 4. Obviously, to be able to see what difference it's actually made between the different PCI generations, we had to test everything again in PCI Gen 3, so that's exactly what we did. While gaming in PCI Gen 3, we could actually feel the card holding back quite a lot. As a comparison, in Back for Blood, running in PCI Gen 4, we managed to see a 14% increase in performance. We got the same result of a 14% increase in Death Stranding, but one of the biggest jumps was actually in Doom Eternal, where we actually saw a 45% increase in the average FPS. God of War actually did see a 23% increase when moving from PCI Gen 3 to 4, but it didn't actually change much of the game. Regardless of whether you were playing this game in PCI Gen 3 or 4, you actually got quite a lot of stuttering when turning in the game, which really did take away from the experience and I really wouldn't advise playing that game on this card. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we did actually see a very similar increase in performance. In this game, we actually got a 24% increase going from PCI Gen 3 to 4, but because there was no stuttering at all in that game, that was actually quite a good leap. So those are the actual benchmarks. Moving from PCI Gen 3 to 4, we did actually see a pretty decent uplift across all of the games. The average increase across all of the games that we tested was around 24% which is a pretty decent uplift. It's like actually getting a new graphics card on a new generation. So the Radeon RX 6500 XT does see a big increase when moving from PCI Gen 3 to PCI Gen 4, but does it actually still make sense considering all the other things that they've removed from the card? And a recommendation on that is probably not. At a time where you couldn't buy any GPUs and these were released for around £220, of course they were going to really sell well. And they did, but times have now changed. You can actually get pretty decent cards for about that price. The RX 6600 that we recently reviewed was only £225, which is about the similar price to these now. And that card is far superior in every single way, so that would be the recommendation we would give. If you didn't want to spend that kind of amount, I would probably still look at the pre-owned market. Even though the latest releases of GPUs are pretty expensive, the pre-owned market is actually going back to normal. You can quite easily pick up an RX 480 or an RX 580, which will compete with this hands down and you can pick them up for a lot less than these. So even though it is a much further down the road, the RX 6500 XT probably still doesn't make that much sense, particularly not at the price range it is. The one that we got that we did pay £90 for made total sense at the time, and that kind of price probably still does make sense. If you can get these for under £100, yes, definitely go for it. They're reasonably good, as long as you don't want to be streaming on it. But anything more than that, I would probably avoid. Anyway, let me know what you think about the RX 6500 XT in the comments below. Did you pick one up and what has your experience been so far? Don't forget to subscribe and like to this video and we'll catch you in the next one.